All right. Jesse Velez always knew he wanted to work in movies. He gained skills for the industry in college and started working on his own prop shop to make for film, television, live entertainment, virtual reality, and special creative industries. He says, I am crazy for movies, sci-fi, and art in all its forms. I'm an animatronics designer and experienced in a wide variety of practical effects techniques. I love assembling and leading creative teams to bring, a life, to, bring to life wild ideas for storytellers. Making magic on screen and in person through the marriage of art and science is my passion. Please welcome Jesse Velez. Hey guys. Thank you all for coming to uh, see this. This project has been crazy fast paced. If any of you were here or know about our uh, first version of Thing we showed last year, which was a walking hand. Um, this one we did in half the time. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process of how we ended up here and what kind of cool technologies we've um, put together that could be used for other types of filmmaking in the future. Um, so this one really started uh, five months ago. Netflix came back to me and asked if we would uh, think about doing a new version of Thing for the premiere of season two. And I sent them back some concepts just as a quick uh, reminder of what we did the first time, this is the actual pitch video that I put together for them to convince them to go for this one. So what we see in this one is the old beta hand, we called it, um, which was very square. It had a lot of different limitations, um, but we, made, we built it all in-house and it took about five months start to finish for us to get to this product, which worked really well for the video at the time. But even just looking at it now compared to this one, you guys can see proportional differences um, and definitely movement differences when we have this one running. Um, so I found these two other companies, um, Manus, which is this glove here. This is a motion capture glove designed originally for digital animation, um, which is now being used for teleoperation of robotics. And then also this company, Alt Bionics. Um, which is really a startup. They were founded in 2020, um, and they are building prosthetic devices for people that are missing limbs. Um, and they also build humanoid industrial robotics. So I saw this video, and I was like, we can do that for Thing. Um, and I called up both of those companies, and they, they were totally on board. And then we had about two months to figure out how to make all of this wireless and able to move around the world. Um, we have things sitting on a pillow here. He doesn't have to be, he's totally uh, self-contained. And I, I put together this artwork and was like, here's the idea. If you guys wanna do it, like, give us a call. Uh, and then they were quiet for about two weeks and then they called us back and said, let's, let's move forward. So we did a lot of testing. Um, the hands from Alt Bionics needed to be modified. Uh, they they already worked with the Manus software, uh, but with tethered uh, input through a cable, because um, the software runs on a computer. Um, so we needed to figure out a way to make that all smaller, and we ended up with a, if you could hold that up actually, with a Microsoft Surface Pro tablet running the Manus software, and also a custom code that sends that data back out to the, to the hand. So I'm gonna turn this on, you guys will see thing operating here. So, he mirrors my movements really fast. Um, over in our booth, we have a lot of crazy radio interference, so he's kinda of jittery over there. But the whole point was for me to be able to do live interactions with the cast um, and really hide in the crowd, kinda of be a magic trick for everybody. Could you slide over one more, three fingers? And just play that one. So we did a world tour, <laughs> Nathan and I here. Um, in one, just about one month, we did LA, Istanbul, uh, Seoul, South Korea, and then London for the premiere. Um, and we used our old walking hand. And then at the end of this video, you'll see we did all of our appearances with the cast on the red carpet. Um, but really for me, this was a, a problem-solving proof of concept. Could we take existing hardware 
um, and new control input devices to do something kind of different. Um, and I'm excited about the possibilities for this glove for other, other things. You could use this glove to drive anything. It doesn't have to look like a hand. Um, but since Thing is a hand, it's a good example for producers, for filmmakers to understand how it gets used. But we had a lot of fun. We did a lot of more jump scare type marketing stuff with him. And then we had the opportunity to meet all the cast members in London. So in each of these videos, Nathan and I are like right behind the camera. That was Victor who actually plays Thing in the show. <laughs> and our high five with Tim Burton, that was a good time, so. And we had the opportunity to show it off at the after party with everybody else there, um, including the, the team that does stop motion for Tim Burton. They were blown away by this stuff. They've been working for him for 35 years, so. Um, I'm gonna let the second one of these play. Yeah, I'm gonna let this one just loop. Um, and we're gonna keep talking about, actually let's switch over to this, this camera here. So this hand sitting on the table here is what we have inside of him there. We always build two of everything. <laughs> um, and definitely one of these was always broken. Um, but uh, that we were able to keep misbehaving. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff because we threw it together so fast. There's uh, radio frequency problems. There's power issues. There's firmware issues on the hand. Stuff that we did not have time or money to figure out. That we have a long wish list of if they ever want to do another version. Um, but the Altbionics hand is really spectacular. Um, yeah. I don't know, Nathan, do you want to describe the way the wireless system works? Yeah, so, so we have um, in, in the hand, well, I'm gonna talk about the tablet for, for a quick second. So inside this case, I'm gonna show you here. So we built our, our own little, little case here. I didn't bring a tool to open it up, but in here uh, we just have the, the Bluetooth receiver for the hand, because that's how the hand communicates with us at the tablet and then then out of that, we have this box right here, which is just an RS-485 uh, Wi-Fi link. Um, so we take that, and then we connect it to the hand, and that is this board that you can see right here. That's a, a little RS-485 board that we pulled out of its housing that you just saw on the other one, and then that's got two tiny little wires that come out of it. It has a little art, you cannot see it in here, sorry. There's a little RJ45 that's buried in here that comes out and then that connects to the hand's actual physical interface, which is down in here. There are a couple little tiny connectors um, on the actual base of the hand. All of this was, was a three, the wrist is a 3D printed wrist that, that we added on to the, the stock uh, hand from Alt Bionics. We also uh, modified the fingers because Victor's proportions are different than their stock hands. So these are all uh, 3D printed uh, nylon centered uh, fingers. Um, but in terms of the power, we also have in here uh, a boost converter because this is a industrial robotic hand, this, this model, and it was designed to work with humanoid robots at 48 volts and these batteries that we, we had, you saw in the video, you saw where we had two, two batteries kind of in series together. Those were two 22 and a half volt batteries that put in series to get us up to, you know, around the 48 volt rent range. But that was not going to fit in this package. So we have this, this 22 and a half volt battery 
that's a FPV drone battery, and then we put the boost converter in here, and that allowed us to get all of the things that we needed into one package. Um, ideally, we would have been able to make all of this smaller, but again, very short timeline that we had, so we used off-the-shelf components. These are just boost converters that you can find, you know, pretty much any electronics store, Amazon, wherever. Um, yeah, so there's a bit of an amalgamation of wires and everything to make all that connect and happen. And like any of these builds, it's really a, a working prototype. We don't ever have enough capacity or need for more than two. Um, so unless Netflix comes back and wants to do something else, this is as, as, tight, as tightly figured out as it will stay, because um, it achieved what it was meant to. So I'm going to leave this video looping. I, I do want to answer questions about this stuff, because I'm sure there are some. Uh, does the prototype that you have here walk? Can you do the movement? This one does not. So the, the first hand we made three years ago walks, but they're totally different machines. Um, this one is a hand, and hands are not meant to walk. So the, the, the other one is actually over at our booth, um, and it's totally, it's totally different. It's more like a hexapod robot that happens to look like a hand on the outside. Please raise your hand if you have a question. I'll bring you the mic. Yeah, are you sending like PWM uh, signals or like full commands that embed like what motor goes where and that kind of thing or how, how's that? Uh, it is my understanding. So what we're sending is RS-485 commands and I'll see if I can show you here just real time from the tablet. So you can see, well, as soon as the glove comes on, you can see the, the data change here. And these are just RS-45 commands that are coming out of the Manus API. Um, no, it's here. Yeah. So that line down, yeah, it's not refreshing on the... Oh, the refresh rate of the camera is just not seeing, seeing the data change. Um, but it, it's actively sending, oh, maybe you can't see it. So kind of down here. Oh, you put it back. Um, but then on the, the hand itself, um, here, can you go back to the, to the hand? So there, there are, my understanding is that it's RS-485 in, and then there's, there's some sort of CAN bus um, configuration in here that's actually talking directly to the motors. And really, the, the glove collects way more information than we can, than we can perform. Um, there's only six motors in the hand, um, so six degrees of freedom, and the glove is measuring position data of each fingertip in reference to the back of the hand. Um, so it's really just, if I'm, if I'm moving one axis, it, get, it gets us that full range of motion on whatever motor matches that. But if you think about 35 muscles control your hand, and most of them are in your arm, so we're trying to hide a lot of uh, mechanical uh, work inside the wrist. Any other questions? Raise your hand, I'll bring you the mic. It seems like there's a quarter to a half second delay when you're moving your hand coupled with reaction time. How difficult did that make it to interact with people? It's, it's definitely faster in other settings. We have so much interference at Maker Fair because everyone's operating on the same frequencies. Um, if you see in the videos, it's usually a one-to-one. -one. Even when I started it up here, um, it was pretty speedy. But that's something, again, that like we were building quickly. We would change it in the future if we had the opportunity to. Um, the delay is maybe 50 milliseconds when we're operating like in the right uh, circumstances. You can see in the video how, how fast that is. Any other questions? Yep. Um, I had a question about the uh, sensors on the glove. Uh, did you guys make those from scratch? How many of the, like, you know, what sort of off-the-shelf components are there or? 
of the technology in the globe. Yeah, this, so Manus is kind of the reason that this project happened at all. They contacted me after our first hand to see if we could come up with an interesting use for their glove. Um, and because we were doing a character that is a hand, it seems like a pretty easy translation. Um, so we did not make the glove, but we modified it to be used for this application. Um, and it works uh, with, a, with a static EMF field around the back of the hand. So most, most motion capture gloves use flex sensors. This one is a magnetic field that measures the position of each fingertip. Um, and then from there, it's mapping where those fingers should be. Um, you can see the, the digital display. This is the input live to the tablet. That's, that's one to one super fast. But that's way more data than we can perform on, a, on this robot. <laughs> Any other questions? Is that a question over there? <laughs> Why are some <laughs> why are some of the hands big and skinny and then the other ones are tiny? <laughs> this hand is big because we had to fit the robot in it. And in the sh in the show the actor who plays thing is much smaller. Um, but even compared to our first one, this is half the size. So maybe with the next one we can get them down to life size. I have a question. On the controller glove, is there a reason why the pointer and the thumb are white and the rest of it is black, or is it just, just to look a, cool? Just a tech design <laughs> feature for the textile. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Any last questions? All right, well, let's give a round of applause for Jesse then, please.